Hello again, everyone, and welcome back. This time we're going to be talking about literal equations. Why are they called literal equations? Well, no great reason other than they have lots of letters in them, hence they are kind of literal. All right, so let's start in a context. It says you are ordering pizzas and sandwiches and you have a budget of $80. The equation 10x plus 5y equals 80, um, where x is the number of pizzas and y is the number of sandwiches, models the problem. How many sandwiches can you buy if you buy three pizzas? What about six pizzas? So notice we're already starting to ask multiple questions over and over again about the number of pizzas. Why? So if we're going to continue to look for the same variable over and over again, it's not as helpful to have it in this form where y is kind of nestled in the middle of the equation. So let's go ahead and solve it for y. That'll make it easier to answer these questions. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to subtract 10x from both sides move it to the other side, we're moving things away from y. And so now we have 5y is equal to 80 minus 10x. Great. We can go ahead and divide both sides by 5. And we can divide the 80 by 5 to get 16, and the negative 10 by 5 to get negative 2. So here we have an equation written y all by itself. We solved for y in this equation. So now we can use our rewritten equation to find y in these different instances. Since we're talking about pizzas, pizzas are 3 and 6. So we go ahead and we plug in 3 into our equation for x, and quickly we see that we get y equals 10. So that is 10 sandwiches when, uh, when we have 3 pizzas. What about if we had 6 pizza, pizzas? then we would have four sandwiches. So we can quickly go ahead and solve these. Now the equation is solved for y. So let's look at another example. So here we have an equation, four equals two m minus five n. And we're asked to solve for m because we're about to be given several values of n and we want to find m. Okay, so I'm gonna rewrite the equation, four equals two m minus five n. If we want m by itself, let's move the n's by using our inverse operations. We're going to add 5n to both sides. So we have 4 plus 5n is equal to 2m. Okay, the only thing that's with the m now is this 2, so we're going to divide both sides by 2. Now, when we divide this side by 2, the 4 can be divided by 2 to give us 2, but the 5, we're just going to be able to write it, write it as 5 halves n and that's now equal to m. So now we have an equation solved for m. m is by itself, that means we did the first step, the first part of this process. Now we're trying to find m when n is these different values. So I'm gonna rewrite our equation over here, m equals, I'm gonna put it in standard form with the uh, variable term first. Okay, there's our equation just rewritten, and I'm gonna substitute first, let's substitute in negative two. So five halves times negative two, plus two. Okay, well that's really negative two over one, if you'd like to make it that. So those are gonna cancel, leaving us a negative five plus two. So m is equal to negative three. Great, that's our first answer. Let's do it again. Five halves, and let's put in zero this time, plus two. Well, zero times anything is just zero. Add two, and we get two. So there's our second equation. And for our third equation, m equals five over two. We're gonna plug in positive two plus two. And so that's two over one. The twos cancel, leaving us a positive five this time, plus two. So we get m is equal to seven. Great. So there's our equation, um, and it is simplified into three different forms.